In yesterday's guide, we talked about the difference between procs, lambdas, and how those are different than methods in relation to variable scope. Now, if you didn't watch that one or you don't remember, let me do a quick review. So if I have a variable here and I set it to zero, then if I have a lambda, which I'll just say is L, then I have access to this variable. So I can call it and say var and then increment it by one. And then if I want to actually call it, and I can call it a few times, then I have access to the set of values. So this is going to print out four, I believe, and there we go. So it goes one, two, three, four. Now this is different than a method, where with a method, if I try to do it, so if I say var adder, and then use the same exact code, this will not work. So this will, this will throw an error. So var adder will throw no method error because it doesn't have access to var. So that's what we talked about yesterday. That's one of the differences between procs, lambdas, and methods. And so in this one, I'm going to talk about a different one. And this one to me is even more important because this is a very practical reason for using a lambda. And for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to use the term proc and lam lambda just interchangeably. They're very, very similar. The only difference is that a proc and a lambda have different ways of returning values when they're called from within a method. So it's a very small time. It, there's not a, many times you're ever going to run into that difference. So for right now, when I say a lambda, I mean a lambda and a proc. The main purpose I have for this guide is to show you the difference between those and methods. So right here, let's talk about one of the most important ones. If we come down to our test, you can see that we have a test here that says that it shows that methods can be passed multiple blocks when leveraging lambda. So if you remember back to when we've discussed blocks before, you know that if you have some method that you can pass in, you know, arg and arg1, and then you can also pass in a block. And what this will allow you to do is to put code inside of it and then pass a block to the method. And this is very nice and very helpful, but there is one issue. I can't do something like this. I can't pass in two blocks. I can't pass in block one and block two. And the reason for this is pretty practical because I can't do something such as some method do and then do inside of it again. Uh, there, that wouldn't even be logical. The parser would just throw an error. So that is not possible. So what happens when you do need the ability to pass in two other processes, not just two arguments, but two processes. Well, that is where lambdas can actually be used in conjunction with method. So instead of thinking of should I use a lambda or should I use a method, the common pattern that I usually follow is how can I use a lambda in conjunction with a method? And that is where this becomes incredibly powerful because we can use lambdas, which essentially are encapsulated blocks. So we can store all kinds of processes and encapsulate all kinds of behavior inside of a lambda. And then we can pass as many lambdas as we want, as many of these processes in to a method. So what this essentially allows us to do is to give the methods the ability to take in as many blocks as they want. So this overrides this behavior of only being able to take one. Let's take kind of a base case example. So if you come down to the test, you can see that we have a method called user update. Now the user update takes in a name and then it takes in a couple other parameters. You can see it right here. 
and just in case you're when uh, if it makes it easier for you to see we can actually wrap this up in quotation marks just or in parentheses just to make it a little bit easier so you can see the first item is a name the next one is the ability to see where that user is so this method is going to be location query and so we and because you can see the word call here you can tell that this is actually a lambda so we're going to be passing in a secondary process and so this is going to find the user's location and then the third argument is another lambda and this one is going to be a time query so what this is going to do is it's going to query whatever time it is so that it can tell you the user's name and their location and then as you look what the expectation is is that this should output a multi-line string so we'll use a here doc for that so we have the name which is a user's name then we have the location and then we have the time so each one of these is a way of being able it's just illustrating we that we can build out multiple processes so instead of passing in hard-coded data we can pass in processes so the second argument here I'm just gonna call set location and then pinged at so I'll say pinged at and up top I'm now going to actually build these lambdas out so as you can see down on line 11 now we have location query and location query is going to be a lambda so I'm going to say location query and it's going to take two arguments of a lat and a long and then we'll pass a block into it and with this it's obviously we're not querying a real user's location we're just going to hard code in these values and it's just going to return a string so I'm going to say lat and then long and that's going to be it so now if we just want to try to test this out to make sure it's working I can do location query call and you know pass in some oh, not these values pass in some integer values and now if I run this then this should work and that does so pretty basic it's just concatenating two numbers and putting a comma in between them but that is even though it's basic that's a block so right here we already have created one block and we're going to be able to pass that right into a method now let's come here and let's create another one so I'm going to say time query and I'm going to put this inside of another lambda so this is going to take a block and now I can say time dot now and that's it so now inside of this I'm going to use the squiggly doc here syntax or here doc syntax so I'm going to say eol and then inside of this I'll say name use string interpolation to grab the name followed by the location and the reason I'm able to do this is because I'm using the here doc syntax that's why we don't have to use double quotes or anything like that now notice here I'm not calling the proc I'm just calling the second argument this could be a hard-coded value but we're going to be able to pass in a process here but notice how there is no block reference inside of the method whatsoever it is simply returning and it's simply calling each one of these arguments so now I can say ping dat, and that's it so now I can just close that off and that should be all that I need to do now I'm going to hit save and now with all of this in place I believe we have everything we need we can always test it out just by coming I'm gonna copy this code and let's just see what our status gets us so if I call status and run this this should give us exactly what we're looking for yep and just in case you want to see what it would look like in kind of a regular environment I can print it to standard output and you can see right there this is working perfectly we have a name a location and a timestamp now what's interesting about this kind of 
process is this is something that may seem pretty basic, but in reality, there would not be an easy way to do this without leveraging lambdas. This is a pretty elegant way of being able to implement this behavior because we have multiple blocks that are all being passed in to a method. So as we talked about in the very initial part of the video, one of the limitations to a method is that it can only accept a single block. Now these ones are pretty basic, but imagine a situation where you have larger kinds of processes and more complex things to do. For example, for this location query, imagine that it communicated with an outside API and it had to perform some tasks in pulling that data in. And then we want the ability in our method to simply set that as an argument and then call it. And that way we can separate it out and we don't have to convolute our method with all kinds of things such as database queries or API queries or anything that really wouldn't make any sense to put in the method and then if you need to add another block, a very easy way to do it is to simply pass in a lambda instead of trying to set up a separate block and putting yield inside of the method. And there are plenty of times where that's needed, but there are also times where it's a lot easier to read when you can separate out each one of those processes into a lambda and then you can simply use a method to just put those all together. So this is something, this is a practice I like to follow whenever I can because I think that it reads very well and it allows for some non-trivial kind of behavior. Let's run this code. I should say run the test to make sure that this is passing, but I believe it is. So this is gonna be for March 23rd running those yes one example no failures so this is a very important topic mainly because if you are new to ruby or you're new to languages that utilize lambdas or they're also called closures in other languages this may be a little bit confusing and it one of the most confusing parts is to know when to use one versus the other one of the most common questions I get from students is why are lambdas even needed when we have methods? And this is a great example. When you have some non-trivial behavior that you want to implement in a method, lambdas are a great way of doing it.